Hello people, this is Johnny again and welcome to my very first ever review. I have made tests in the past about different music production products but I never really talked about them and this time I would kind of like to change that. And for this first review I uh, will talk about Rosen Digital Impulse Responses. First of all, I don't have all of their impulse responses that they have available at this point. But with the few that I do have, I could kind of already tell where things are going with their overall vibe and quality and what have you. So are those impulse responses really as good as people say? First of all, let's listen in to a very generic three minute mix test that I made in about a day. And the song is really very generic. It's nothing from the upcoming album. Um, it's really just to check the tone. So let's listen in. Okay, so there you get an idea of what I got out of those impulse responses. And all in all, I have to say they sound very good. I mean, they have a very good balance. They are not crazy on the high end. They are not boomy on the low end. And they're overall just very well rounded. You don't really have any crazy problem areas that you need to fix and kind of work out. They just go well with whatever you do. But of course, they do not go without at least just a little bit of post EQing. For example, what you saw, perhaps on the settings that I showed throughout this test, is I always kind of reduce this 300 to 500 Hz area to get a bit more rid of this little bit of mud that's still in there and that you actually always have in almost everything. And also, especially the orange cap, for me, needs a bit of surgical work. 
For example, you saw that tight surgical cuts around this 3K area. And also I had to reduce the 6K area because it was a little bit fizzy and fuzzy up there. But um, really that, that was only the case for the rhythm tone. I also tried the orange cap on the clean tone and it sounds fantastic there. Very nice and sparkly and full sounding and you didn't really have to do those surgical cuts. You know, but of course filtering the low end is still kind of a must in mixing. Um, what surprised me the most, however, is the Marshall 1960 Vintage cap. I actually just got it for a nice battery lease, but I also tried it on a different stuff and it surprised me just how versatile that impulse response actually is. It also sounds massive on rhythm guitars, it sounds great on the distorted channel for the bass and it also works well on cleans. So that vintage cap is really a good buy in my opinion. So from an engineer's viewpoint overall. Um, those impulse responses from Rosen Digital are very wor worth their money. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not much of a talker, you know that. So bear with me. Um, yeah, quality-wise, excellent. You know, go for it. You cannot do anything wrong with those impulse responses. Now, from a musician's viewpoint, however, I do have a little bit of a gripe with the fact that there are only three impulses per cap available. Um, I guess the idea behind it was to keep things simple and to the point, which usually I love. I really love such an approach. But in this case, um, I, I would have liked a bit more options. For example, a bit more options on uh, mic choices and placements just so you can tweak your own personal individual tone a bit more but with only three impulse responses that also don't have that much of variation in them that's kind of difficult but again seeing as how the overall quality is really good and absolutely nothing to complain about I'm not sure if that's such a big deal that there are not so many impulse responses available per cap. So yeah, that's my two cents on this whole matter. And this also already concludes my review on the Rosen Digital impulse responses. I guess short, but to the point, but what else am I supposed to say here? I mean, they are impulse responses, not fluid dynamics. So there's not much to talk about. They are great. You don't have that much variety in one cap and that's pretty much as it stands for me now if you like this review and if you would like to see more of my opinion on stuff then i'm actually going to need your help because i don't have the money to just go out and buy everything i mean everything you see here in my studio was saved up for over long periods of time and everything I have here I also have a need for myself so if you would like me to review stuff and make an honest review also pointing out flaws which I will do because I'm dead honest um, yeah then I really need your support so this really depends on you if this should go on um, the best thing you can do at this point is go to my Bandcamp page, link is in the description, and just download my music and donate whatever you will. For example, what I would also like to review at some point is Bias FX, because I have seen a lot of reviews about it, but they all feel sponsored, if you know what I mean. It's like nobody dares to point out even the little list of flaws. And I mean, yeah, it sounds great, but is it that good that people are so hyped about it? I, I'm very suspicious to that whole situation. That's why I would like to check for myself. Is it really so? And don't get me wrong. I also tried out the demo, but it only comes with 12 amps. And 
the ones that I actually really wanted to check out are not in there, which kind of sucks. Um, yeah, and also from the demo, I couldn't really see that it was that great that it should hit me off my chair. So, and I would just like to to make a more in-depth review, a more direct comparison to the Pod HD Pro also. So I can really tell what's going on there. And I would very much like to share my findings with you. And as I said, I'm dead honest. I will point out the good things and I will point out bad things if I find any. So that's it for today and that's it from me so far. See you next time. <laughs>